Welcome to She Stitchin'. This is Melanie. I'd like to thank you for joining me today to learn this um, cool pattern called Raised Harvest Stitch. Um, there's something called Harvest Stitch, but this is a little different, and I'll tell you uh, why in a few minutes. But before we get started, um, I just wanted to let you know that this pattern is something that you can learn to do on your own, but this video is part of um, the Just Another Crochet Along series where we're building 48 different samples to make a blanket together. So the reason that this stitch came about is because next week is our finale week in the blanket. And the last stitch is going to be this beautiful harvest stitch. And it was a little bit tricky of a pattern, so we broke it down into two parts. Uh, this week we're learning how to do the puff stitches, and last week we learned how to do the curved waves. So we kind of broke this down into two different skill sets, so that's why we have the raised harvest stitch. Um, so let me talk about the samples a little bit. The crochet long I'm doing all in uh, Karen One Pound, and this is the light sage color and the soft gray. And then here I have a sample that I worked up for you guys with a, a variegated yarn. So this is a one-sided stitch, but I worked this up in um, Creamsicle by Peaches and Cream, just to show you guys. If you're going to be working this up for the crochet long, you're going to want to use your 5.5 millimeter hook, and um, you're going to want to have a starting chain of 31, but you can definitely make this in any size. And then this is a two-color sample that I worked up, and the pink is this Red Heart Shimmer. Um, and it is the hot pink colorway, and then I just have a white Karen Simply Soft going with that. I really wanted to see what it would look like in pink with a different color, because I kind of feel like they look like hearts, and I feel like this would be a cute, like, table runner or something like that for, um, Valentine's Day, if you're interested, so I wanted to show that. And I'll show how to do it in two colors at the end of the video. So the reason why I'm calling this the Raised Harvest Stitch instead of the harvest stitch is because we're using those post stitches. Oops, and let me tell you why. So this is the harvest stitch that I saw around the internet in a couple different places. So this is a cotton and it's also peaches and cream. Uh, and I think it's the happy-go-lucky uh, colorway. So this is, you can see here that the stitches don't really line up right. Because of the way that crochet works, they don't go right on top of each other. And I wasn't really thrilled with how that looked. So when you make it with post stitches, those lines are much straighter. So that's the reason why I changed that. So let me meet you at the end of um, 31 stitches, or 31 chain stitches. Here is our chain of 31. And before we get started on the first row of the pattern, I wanted to... Um, tell you the other change that I made. So in the regular harvest stitch that I've seen everywhere, the, it normally starts off with just a row of single crochet or a row of chain. The problem I think with that is each of these puff stitches is nine yarn. So you'll, you'll have nine loops on the hook. So that means there's 18 pieces of yarn going through that one stitch. And I really was not liking the way it looks. Here in the cotton, it doesn't look that bad uh, because the hook was kind of big for this size cotton. But I did work up like this a uh, small little piece to show you. So if you do, um, if you do it with a chain stitch bottom, that's what the bottom ends up looking like. And it really is just not even anymore. And it's like super stretching out that one chain. And then right here, I did it with a single crochet. So that is a little bit better, um, but it is still stretching it out weird and putting a lot of stress on that, those few loops. So let me show you how we got around that. It's also something that we've done on um, the box stitch and the arcade stitch and a few of the other stitches. So what we're going to do is we're going to skip that first stitch and then we're going to do four single crochets, okay? So skip that first back bump uh, is where I always like to insert into the chain because it gives us a nice edge. So skip the first one and then do four single crochets. Now this is the American single crochet, the US terms. So we yarn over once, pull the loop up, then yarn over, pull through two. And that's um, how we do it. So we're gonna do four of these, and then we're gonna do a chain one, skip one. One, two, three, four. Chain one, skip one, and then we're gonna do six single crochets. So this area right here is where we're gonna be putting in 
the um, puff stitches to ha make sure that they have enough room to not stress out the fabric and so it looks a little bit better. So I guess gonna go four, then chain one, skip one, and then you're gonna do six single crochet, then chain one, skip one, and do six again. And then we end up with four stitches in the last one. So I'll put the um, I'll put the steps on the screen here and then I'll meet you at the end of the row. To review the first row, you started off with the four single crochet, chain one, skip one, then six single crochet, chain one, skip one. Another time with six, chain one, skip one, six again, chain one, skip one, and then four single crochet at the end. All right, let's go ahead and turn this and get started on um, the next row. So this row, we're gonna start with a chainless standing double crochet. I've taught this in all of my videos, so I don't wanna spend too much time on it, but I will also put a link in my description box to the tutorial from Moogly. Um, so what we're gonna do is, if you're not comfortable doing this, you can replace it with a chain three. But what we're gonna do is pull up our hook or our loop to the height of a double crochet and then hold our tension here with our pointer finger and wrap it around so it looks like we have a yarn over then we're going to insert our hook yarn over the back pull it through and then we're going to finish this like a normal double crochet so yarn over pull through two yarn over you can finally let go pull through the next two so if you're not comfortable doing that you can do a chain three all right then we're going to yarn over and we're going to do a double crochet in the next one through the front and the back loops there we go. And that's the US terms for the double crochets. Now we're gonna go ahead and start with our first V puff stitch. So because we skipped those stitches, it's easy to tell where it's gonna go. It's gonna go in that chain one space. So we'll skip these two single crochets and go into that chain one space. So we're gonna yarn over first and insert our hook, yarn over the back and pull it back up. Now we have three loops on and we're gonna do that a total of four times. So we already did it once, let's do it three more times. Yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull it back up. Now we have five loops on, yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull loop through. Now we have seven. And for the last time, we're gonna yarn over, insert our hook, yarn over, pull it back up. And now we have nine loops on. Two, four, six, seven, eight, and nine. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There we go. And then we're gonna yarn over and pull it through all of them. Now that was a nice, easy pull through. Sometimes it's not that easy to pull through. And all you have to do is kind of rock your hook a little bit like this to get through there. And then we're going to close that off with a chain and that's your first puff stitch and now we're going to do another chain so that the puff stitches um, lean away from each other all right and now we're going to go ahead and do that puff again so yarn over insert your hook yarn over pull loop through we've got three so we're going to do that two more or three more times two times oops three times. Oh goodness, something went on wrong there. Let's start that again. So we'll do that four times. So one, two, three, and four. There we go. We've got nine loops on. So then we're going to yarn over. So if you have problems pulling through, just point the um, teeth part, the grabby part of your hook down and just kind of use your other fingers to pull that through. There we go. Um, and then close it off with a chain. If you're having a hard time pulling it through, just pull up a little bit higher when you um, pull your loops um, through so that it's not too tight on your hook. Okay, now what we have up next is the section of six single crochets. So we're gonna put two double crochets in the middle of that. So that means we're gonna have two empty single crochets on this side and then two empty single crochets on that side and our double crochets will go in the middle. So skip, skip two and do two double crochets. One and two. There we go. So that is the basic foundation that you need for this stitch. I'll go ahead and do that B puff with you again. So we're gonna yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull loop through. Yarn over, insert your hook, pull loop back through. Yarn over, insert your hook, pull loop back through. One, two, three, four. Six, seven, one more time. Yarn over, insert your hook, pull loop back through. Now you've got nine loops on your hook. And then close it with a chain. And put that other chain in the middle so they lean away from each other. So yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull loop through once. Yarn over, insert your hook, pull loop back through. That's twice. Yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull loop back through. That's three times. Yarn over, insert your hook, pull the loop back through. That's four times. And you end up with 
nine loops, then yarn over, pull through all nine, then chain one to close it off. All right, and then you're gonna skip the next two again. So skip one, two, put those double crochet into the middle. So skip two, put the double crochet in there. And then do it again. I will meet you at the end to show you how the row ends. There we go at the end of row one, and that is officially the end of counting. There is no more counting in this pattern, which is amazing. Unless you need to count one, two to see that there's two, but no more counting stitches. Woohoo! So now we're going to part start the repeat. So because we're doing um, post stitches, um, we are going to have a two row repeat, but it's really simple, the difference between the two rows. So let's go ahead and get started, and we're going to do that chain listening double crochet again. So go ahead and pull up your yarn to the height of a double crochet. Loop it around so it looks like you have a yarn over. Insert your hook through the front and the back loop. Yarn over, pull the loop up. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. And you can always replace that with a chain three if you're not feeling comfortable. And then this is gonna be our first front post stitch. So what we're gonna do is this is exactly the same as a double crochet excuse me, except we're going to go around the whole post, around the whole stitch. We're going to ignore the V's at the top where we normally go in, and we're going to go around and behind the whole stitch. So this is what it looks like from the back. We're not going through anything. We're going all the way around the stitch. Then you yarn over and pull up. And then you're going to yarn over and finish this just like a normal double crochet. So pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And there you have your first front post double crochet for this pattern. And now what we're going to do is we're going to do um, the V puff stitch right into the middle of this puff stitch here. So it's really easy. That's why I'm saying we don't have to count because we're just kind of copying. So we yarn over, insert your hook, pull loop through. And we do that uh, four times. So one, two, three, and four. Then yarn over, turn the bitey part down and pull through all of them. And then yarn over and do a chain to seal it off. And then do another chain so that the V stitches will point away from each other. Excuse me while I pull out some yarn here from my... This is all that's left of my Karen one pound <laughs> uh, that I had from the beginning of this blanket of that color. All right, so now let's go the other side of the puff. So uh, we're gonna do that yarn over, insert hook, yarn over, pull it back through. We're gonna do it four times. So two, oops, I let go. Yeah, I let go there. Let's start that again. That was weird. Okay, yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull back through. That's three on the hook, five on the hook, seven on the hook, and nine on the hook. Then we're gonna yarn over and pull through all nine. And then close it off, lock it closed with a chain stitch. All right, and then we're gonna do two front post double crochets. Here we go. One. And two. There we go. And then we're just gonna keep doing that all the way across. So next comes a, uh, another puff stitch. Five, seven on the hook, and nine on the hook. So if I'm going a little bit fast, you can use in, in the YouTube's option, there is an option for slowing down the video or making it go faster if I'm going too slow for you. So you can do that. Also feel free to push pause and rewind if there's something that I'm doing fast, too fast for you. There we go. So that's what you're going to do, and you're going to go ahead and re repeat that all the way across this row. If you guys are struggling with a certain point and the video isn't enough, you can definitely reach out to me on my Facebook or my Instagram, and I will uh, be able to respond to you there. And it's also cool because if you um, like are having a problem, I can look at a picture of your work and help you get back on track. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And if you find a mistake with mine which I'm sure there are some, you can definitely um, 
reach out to me there. Did I do a chain before I started that? Oh no, I didn't. Dang it. All right. So go ahead and finish out this row and I will meet you at the end and I'll show you how to do the next one. Okay. So here I am at the end of the row and I'm going to suggest not ending the row with a fr front post stitch, just end it with a regular double crochet um, so that it keeps our edge um, nice and strong. So what we're going to do is find the top of that chain list ending double crochet or the top of your chain three, depending on what you did. Make sure you do not insert into the back of the post of the stitch that you just put the post stitch around. So make sure you're going onto the turning chain. So make sure you don't go in here on the back of this post stitch that you just used. Make sure you're going into the turning chain or your chain list ending double crochet and just end it with a double crochet. All right. You do want to make sure that everything looks good. Looks like a few of the puff stitches I was holding a little bit weird. So there we go. All right, and let's go ahead and do the next stitch. So now we'll be working on the back side. There you go. So we're going to do that chain list ending double crochet again or a chain three. So pull that up to the height of a double crochet, wrap it around, insert through the front and the back loop. Yarn over, pull loop through, yarn over, pull through two, let go of your tension, yarn over, pull through the last two. There we go. And then we're going to do a back post double crochet. So the way that we do that is we're going to drop our hook down and we're going to enter this way so that we are pushing this um, post stitch um, away from us. Okay. And then yarn over, pull loop up and finish this like a normal double crochet, pull through two and then pull through two. There we go. So that's your first back post double crochet of this pattern. All right, now we're going to go into the middle here and do an, uh, another V puff stitch. So yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through a loop four times. So that was one, two, three, and four. And then make sure we have nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yarn over, insert your hook, and pull through all nine of those stitches. Then yarn over, pull it through for a chain to seal it off. And then another chain to make sure the puffs stay apart from each other. All right, and then we do another one. One, two, three, and four. So you have nine on. Nine, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then yarn over, pull through all nine, Seal it with the chain, and then we're going to do two more back posts. So go ahead. Sometimes I find it easier to hold my work a little bit different when I'm doing post stitches, just so that I can see what's going on and really get my hook around properly. A second double crochet all the way behind there. There we go. So that's the repeat that we'll do. You'll do um, a V puff stitch and then two back post double crochets. So I'll meet you at the end just to close it off with you. All right, so there you have the first four rows of the pattern, the first three rows of the repeat, and should be good to go. So I hope that you guys are enjoying this. Let's show you how to do it with two colors. So I'm gonna grab my pale green and bring it in here with my light sage. And I'm going to be using this to do the puff stitches today. So the first uh, two stitches are just going to be in the other color. When you're doing these, you can just, oh, okay. There is the end of our row four and it's the third row of our repeat. And then from there out, um, you're just going to go ahead and keep repeating rows three and rows four all the way until you reach your desired height. Now, if this was going to be in my permanent piece, I might probably go back and redo that puff. I don't know. It got a little bit loose or something. Um, but I hope you guys are enjoying this. Um, so just go, keep, go ahead and keep going until you get your desired height. If you were to count these stitches, it is 29 stitches across. And if you've been doing this with us, uh, we want to have 30 stitches for the border. So at some point in there, you're going to want to do, um, an increase to get to the 31 across, or I'm sorry, to the 30 across with the extra stitch in each border or in each corner. Um, and the bottom did start off with 30 stitches. So the bottom is okay for adding, adding that border. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and show you how to work the two colors. So 
well, if you watched my color changing video on how to do the post wave stitches, you'll know that normally we carry yarn at the bottom of stitches. So let's go ahead and do the first uh, chain listening double crochet. And because it's a regular stitch, we want to carry the yarn at the bottom. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and hold this here with my uh, middle finger. I'm going to hold the yarn in the back. And then I'm going to do a chain listening double crochet and I'm going to loop through that so that it stays um, under the work, okay? So yarn over, or I'm sorry, pull up your um, yarn to the height that you want for a double crochet. Sorry, let me get that a little bit high. So let's shorten that down. Okay, so we're going to pull that up to the height of a double crochet. And you can see where that pale green is, hopefully. And then we're going to wrap it around. We're going to insert through the front and the back loop and under the carrying thread. And then we're going to yarn over and pull this up. So that it looks like we have three loops on our hook. Then yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. All right. And now, um, oops. Before we pull through that last two, our next stitch is going to be a post stitch. And if you watched my last video, you know that when we're color changing with post stitches, I always carry the yarn through the top. So now we're actually going to pull both of these colors through. There we go. And then when I go to do the next post stitch, I'm just going to do a regular post stitch. And that is to carry the yarn at the top so that we can get it to the next stitch. I do no longer have my sample with the bad way of doing that. But if you're a little bit confused, you can go ahead and watch this other video. So then we're going to um, go behind this post stitch and do, we're going to do another front post and then the next color that we're going to want to use is going to be the light, the lighter color. So I'm going to do that last pull through It's going to be with my second color. Okay. So I'm going to do that for the pull through and I'm going to let this light, darker color drop down. And then I'll just hold it there to make sure that I crochet around it. And I'm going to switch my carrying yarn or my fingers to the other yarn. And now we're going to do that B puff stitch. Okay, just normal. So when you insert your hook, you're going to make sure that you're going, uh, that you're like wrapping it around that carrying color. One, two, three, and four. And then we're going to close it lock it and put the extra one in make sure sometimes on these puff stitches that carrying yarn is going to get bunched up so just give it a little bit of a tug to make sure it's not going to bubble, bubble out anywhere all right now let's go ahead and do this again so one two three and four and we're gonna pull it through and then our next stitch is going to be a puff stitch. So for the closing chain, I'm going to pull through both of these. I'm sorry, I don't know if I said that right. Our next stitch is going to be a post stitch. So you want to carry your yarn at the top. So I'm going to pull this through. There we go. All right. And now we're going to do two front post double crochets. So one. And then our next stitch is also going to be a post stitch. So we're going to pull through both of the colors and then we're going to do a post stitch again okay now before I finish this I'm going to think next I'm doing a regular it's going to be a regular stitches and we're going to do a post stitch okay so the last pull through will be a color change to the lighter color and then we're going to do a post stitch and I'm going to make sure that I'm holding that second piece of thread down there five yarn, seven yarn on my hook, and then nine. Then go ahead, <laughs> close it. My kids are making fun of their cartoon. I'm sorry if you're hearing them in the background. All right, and then we're gonna, so we close it with a chain and then we put another chain on there. Then we're gonna do another puff stitch. One, two, three, and four. And we're going to close it and then I'm just going to pull, make sure that that's not bubbling up. I'm going to pull through both of the colors. So my next stitch is a, po a post stitch and we like to carry the yarn at the top of post stitches. So I'm going to pull through both of them. All right. I'll show. Now this is 
never going to completely hide the yarn um, up here in the back. But that's what the back looks like. And it doesn't have any hanging threads. So that's the best way to do it. So let me do this with you one more time. And then I will jump ahead and show you the result. So we're going to do a post stitch. My next stitch is also a post stitch. So I'm going to carry it at the top again. So if it's a post stitch, you carry the yarn at the top. If it's a, not a post stitch, you carry the yarn at the bottom. All right. And my next stitch is going to be in the light color. So I'm going to switch over to the light color and it's a regular stitch. So I'm going to let that darker color drop down. There we go. Then we're going to do a bust stitch and we're going to make sure we go all the way around that carrying color. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one more time. Then close it with a chain and put the extra one in there. And do it again. One, two, three, four. And our next stitch is a post stitch, so we're gonna cut and a color change, so we're gonna seal it like that. There we go. So let me go ahead and, um, so what I was saying before where it's never going to be completely hidden on the back is definitely true, but on the front, when we go to do the next row, we will be doing another row of post stitches. So even though you can see that yarn at the top from the back, when you go to look from the front, you can't see it. So I'll do another row in this just to show you what it looks like. This would be fun to do as like a rainbow of changing color. Now I'm, you know, adding that to the things I want to make. Who else has a long list of things they want to make? I'm pretty sure every crocheter does. And crafter, probably. All right, so I'll finish up this row just to show you what it looks like. All right, that's all she wrote. <laughs> just wanted to show you what it looks like with two finished colors. I'll show you two things right now. Number one, you cannot see that lighter color from the front. You can see it definitely on the back. But with those post stitches, when you carry the yarn at the top, that's where it's going to be hidden. Just like it was hidden on our white and pink sample. Um, and number two, right here, I made a mistake. Uh, when I switched to coloring with, or to pull, to the darker color, I didn't pull my yarn tension tight. So the carrying yarn was all bubbled up under here. So always before you do color changes, make sure that you give your yarn a little bit of a tug. Make sure you're not tugging it hard enough to like cinch the piece together because we don't want to do that and change the way the fabric is holding. But just pull it a little bit so that, um, so that you're not going to have crazy snags like this. And then I'll go ahead and redo those two last stitches. So um, if you guys have any questions, please comment down below. I will answer them as soon as I can. Um, and um, make sure to check me out on Facebook and Instagram so that you can uh, communicate with me if you need any help. And we also have a group on Facebook that's completely for just this pro uh, just the projects that I share on my YouTube channel. So I'll see you guys there. Next week we have our wheat harvest stitch, wheat field stitch I think I called it. I'm very excited. I can't believe we're finally here but I can't believe it took this long. <laughs> it was like an are we there yet? We will finally be there at the end next week and I'll also be showing you how to do this with a color change because it is very vibrant very beautiful. So see you guys next week. Um, I hope you have a good one. May your stash always be plentiful. And if anybody asks where I am, just tell them she's stitching. <laughs>